Feely Loom friends, welcome back to another Magic Monday on 1111. Today, we'll be talking about the magic of manipulating time. While switching to daylight savings time delights a lot of folks, it also disrupts our daily rhythm by shifting our internal clock. It's not a feeling I personally enjoy. The springing forward part, that is. I love the fall back parts. I always feel like I'm way ahead of the schedule. So today, we've gathered a few tips to help you get the most out of springing forward while not feeling like you're constantly running behind or need a nap. And as always, I'll pit my two cents against the advice of the experts. Here we go. Tip number one, gradual adjustment. Start shifting your sleep schedule in the days leading up to the change. Aim for 15-minute adjustments to bedtime and wake-up times to ease your body into the new rhythm. I used to do this when I used an alarm clock way back when, and it worked great. Nowadays, I do this with my pets, more or less. I start adjusting my dog's eating and going out schedule about a week ahead, just switching a little bit each day, each meal, each time he's supposed to go out. It works like a charm. He's none the wiser. He's well-fed. Obviously, well-slept. They sleep whenever they darn well please. And it seems to work out just great. So both Charleston and I are on board with this tip. Tip number two, a consistent sleep schedule. Even if you feel tired, try your best to stick to your regular sleep and wake times. This will help regulate your body's natural sleep-wake cycle. I'm not sure what that tip even means. Does it mean stick to the new time or the time your body naturally wants to do it, which is probably the old time? I'm already confused. We're only on tip two. Okay, tip number three is an early dinner. Maintain your usual dinner time or even eat slightly earlier in the day around the time change. This helps regulate your digestion and sleep patterns. Well, what time does that mean we go with? If springing forward means that if we normally eat at 6, now at 7, and it's telling us to eat earlier, is that telling us to go with 6.45 with the new time? Maybe. And maybe that makes sense. I can't believe how confused I'm getting by something so simple as moving the clocks an hour. My goodness. The next tip involves light exposure. We are to get plenty of natural sunlight in the morning, and avoid bright screens close to bedtime. Sunlight helps to regulate our circadian rhythm, which promotes better sleep at night. And I will jump at any chance to get to use the word circadian. I just think it's a cool word. And I will say when it comes to bright screens at night, I don't know about other people's devices, but mine have the option to kind of go warm with the light. It's not like a halogen white light. It's more like a warm sort of Christmassy light. Anyway, it's got more of a yellow to it. And that's what I use in the evening, so I'm never disturbed by bright lights on my screen. Tip number five is to establish a relaxing routine before bedtime. This could include taking a warm bath, reading a book, or practicing light stretches. I have to be careful with the light stretches, otherwise they get me all raring to go and ready to get up and get moving. Number six, I think I finally find something I totally agree with. Avoid stimulants. Limit caffeine, alcohol intake, especially in the late afternoon and evening, as they can interfere with sleep quality. Well, I don't do caffeine or alcohol, so maybe I'm okay. But for those who do enjoy these substances, then make sure to not use them too late in the day. Number seven, I think, is an interesting one. Exercise strategically. Regular exercise is beneficial but avoid strenuous workouts close to bedtime as they can energize you and make it harder to fall asleep. That kind of goes with what I said about stretching when they said practice light stretching, maybe doing like a little bit of yoga or something like that. But you don't want to do anything that tells your body that you're about to engage in an aerobic workout, for example. So know what they used to call high impact aerobics right before bed, or you'll be too wired, or it could be at least. Even though you might be pooped out, It's a different pooped out than being just totally relaxed and ready to go to sleep. Some people opt for melatonin supplements and support. And to me, that boils down to do what you got to do to get into the natural rhythm and regulate your sleep cycle. Number nine is one I love. 
And this is one I need more of, period. Be patient. Allow your body time to adjust to the new schedule. It may take a few days or even a week to fully adapt the new sleep schedule. And that's why when I was on the clock, had to be in an office at a certain time, that's why I would set the clocks back gradually over the course of a week. And I would go back even further than just an hour because I wanted to feel fully rested. And for some reason, this one hour thing always wreaks havoc on me when we spring forward. And number 10 sounds like just the ticket. Manage naps. I think naps are one of the greatest things in the world. I try to take one at least once a year. It doesn't always happen. And I did say once a year. I don't know how people find time in their day to nap, but I applaud those who do. I think naps are just lovely. It's suggested that if you do take naps, keep them short, 20 to 30 minutes, and avoid napping late in the afternoon, as this can further disrupt your nighttime sleep. I find that very interesting, by the way, because that's exactly when I want to nap. I've always thought that three o'clock in the afternoon was kind of nap time. Some places have a siesta in the afternoon. When I was growing up, there were ads for Snickers candy bars, and it was sort of encouraging you to take a break with one during your busy work day when you started to feel that you were dragging. Pretty much it's telling you to get that sugar rush at three o'clock because you're pooped. So that's when I would want a nap. Instead, I go with tea time, which is just as relaxing. And I do decaf, by the way. So with all this in mind, your tiny task today is find the tip that works for you. The one thing you can begin doing today to start adjusting your schedule in preparation of turning the clocks ahead this weekend. And may I suggest that the best way to fall asleep, as was mentioned earlier, might be to read a book. And you can help your kids get excited to read books when you take part in our When Are You Reluctant Reader free five-day guided training. How is that for a segue? This wonderful free activity begins next Monday after you've turned the clocks. And you can go at your own pace if your schedule is still getting caught up. And did I mention it's free? And truly, we have been working for years on finding the keys to getting kids to fall in love with books. And we believe we've done just that and can help you to do that as well. So we hope you'll join us. For now, take a nap while you can and enjoy looking forward to longer days. Chitty, stay some, everyone. Tuta. Music